Hi, I'm Dar Mansur. I'm a solo female traveller. How did I start it? It accidentally happened back in 2013. I supposed to go to Cambodia with my friends, but then out suddenly, you know, she cancelled the, the trip. So yeah, that's how I started. I choose to be travel alone. I just, you know, like feel comfort and um, I can do whatever I want. It's basically about the freedom. I only been to 26 countries. It's not even reached 10% of, you know, countries over the world, I guess. The most challenging country, I would say, maybe China, uh, because, you know, language barrier is a huge challenge for me because they don't speak English at all. And in Russia, I have to deal with, you know, freaking minus 30 degree. It's during winter at that time. In Serbia, I face discrimination of religion because I'm Muslim, but I bet it makes me more want to explore more about the world, you know. I face a couple of issues about discrimination for being solo female traveller in different countries. For example, when I was in Bulgaria, I stayed there for three months and they don't really like Muslim because, you know, they've been controlled by Ottoman and the Turkey a couple of thousand years ago. When I was in Nepal, I've been, you know, helped with a lot of trenches because, you know, maybe they feel females more fragile in terms of security and stuff. But about discrimination, I think for now it's just Bulgaria, that's it. For Malaysian, I guess, it's not really usual for a female to travel alone. Especially when you are, you know, thousand miles from your own country and families, right? I think this is like one of the biggest challenge, main challenge that I have to overcome for myself and to prove for my society that, you know, I'm, I always come back in one pieces, even though I face, you know, discrimination or other, than, other challenges. Mm -hmm. But I want our society to out from a comfort zone where we think that, you know, this is unusual, this is, this is, this is not secure, you know, if you step out from your, your comfort zone or whatever. So yeah, basically, that's one of the main reasons I do this alone. I'm so blessed because I have a very supportive family and, you know, people that I love and friends, close friends, they always, you know, support whatever I did. For example, when I told them I want to resign from my full-time job before, at first they were, you know, like, makes me feel like you have to think more about your future because you don't have fixed income most of this. But when I explain what I want in my life, I think this is my passion because I still can do what I did before. I'm a journalist, so I can still write and, you know, send my, my stories while I'm traveling. You know, when I was with my previous job, I only can take leave off from working maybe just two or three weeks. So that would be the longest holiday that I can apply. And for me, that period of time is not enough for me to explore the place, you know. For example, you know, to be and stay with a local and, you know, learn more about them and stuff. So that's why I decided I want to resign and uh, go to places that I want and explore more about them. You know, I am interested in culture, difference of religions, lifestyles. After maybe almost nine years I travel alone. I didn't face any misconception. I didn't stay in a hostel or hotel. I stay with the local people. You start something with a smile and uh, you end up something with a smile and be good to everyone. Don't put the negativity in your head. Everything will be will run smooth again. Well, if you want to travel alone. The trick that I can share is for myself, if someone asks me, you know, do are you alone here? Are you travel slow? I always say, you know, I'm with my friends, either my friends in a hotel or hostel, or maybe like my friend will come in next two days. I don't answer like, you know, yes, I'm alone or something. I just want people to know that, you know, I'm here with somebody, so you don't just mess with me. That's all. I went to Turkey, Bulgaria, Serbia, Bosnia and Montenegro. That basically, you know, for I mean, for our society perception, it's not really safe because you know it's kind of you know conflict or war kind of countries. For a traveler, if we have the one application that you can uh, do volunteer, 
or stay with local and in return you 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 know just work for them for example uh, we have help exchange we have a woofing that you can ask the host yeah you will come to their country and do volunteer for a certain period of time and in return you have to maybe work for them for five or six days a few six hours a day in return as well they will give you food and place to stay that's how i did when i was in balkan for almost a year i do volunteering in organic farm in turkey for a month and i switched to bulgaria for three months in hostel I speak about what i get I get satisfaction. It's kind of fulfill my dream because I not even cross my mind. I can you know travel to Europe, for example, for Russia to Russia to you know witness Northern Light in Norway. Yeah, I was born you know in a small village in the northern part of Malaysia where you know I have a lot of siblings, which I don't think countries that I seen on television when I was small. I can you know go and explore by myself